Thank you, uh, Dr. Ibrahim. And thank you, Dr. Um, Ahmed Al Askar, our senior, always respected. And thank you for the organizing committee for the invitation. So, CAMO, this is uh, something uh, and step back. <laughs> so, we are speaking about allogenic and cart and bites, and I don't know what else, but the fact is, all of us, we are dealing with chemotherapy. We cannot uh, cure our lymphoma patients without chemotherapy. Um, so, and I was uh, requested to speak about um, uh, our experience at uh, King Faisal uh, Hospital um, um, in dealing with lymphoma patients. And this is our last work, what we have recently published. Um, um, it's uh, about using outpatient fractionated eyes protocol in relapse and refractory lymphoma. And when we speak about lymphoma, we're speaking about uh, um, Hodgkin and non-Hodgkin lymphoma. That's why the next uh, few slides will be split. So introduction, maybe uh, diffuse library lymphoma, as you know, is the most common uh, type of lymphomas. Um, and um, half of the patient, more than half of the patient, they are uh, 60 years, uh, uh, years old and uh, older. Uh, and um, majority of the patient, they will come to the physician, to the oncologist with uh, advanced stages. Uh, Hodgkin lymphoma, uh, median age is 38 uh, years. Um, the five-year uh, relative survival is 86 uh, percent, uh, and most of the cases they are uh, coming to their doctors uh, in early stages, uh, unlike the diffuse lymphoma. lymphoma. The outcome uh, with the conventional chemotherapy, we know that we can cure around uh, 50 to 60 percent of uh, uh, diffuse lymphoma, and lymphoma. Um, Unfortunately, there are uh, some patients who are uh, primary refractory, 10 to 15% of the patient will be primary refractory. And of those who went in uh, complete remission, around 50, 70 to 80% would go in complete remission. Out of these patients, uh, around 30 to 40% will eventually relapse. And the standard of care, of course, for eligible patients is the autologous stem cell transplantation. And with the autologous stem cell transplantation, we can cure around 50% of the patient. But we have first to bring the patient in, in remission in order to go for transplantation. Uh, in Hodgkin lymphoma, uh, the data uh, look um, similar in, in some extent, uh, especially in uh, patients who are going for uh, autologous stem cell transplantation. Only 50% of the patient they will be cured with the autologous stem cell uh, transplantation. Um, um, and, and if we have a patient who is relapsing and uh, we think on uh, transplantation or even some patients who are not eligible for transplantation, what are the options in diffuse lobby cell lymphoma? Um, so, and I listed here some of uh, protocols, and there is no one uh, standard of care. There are several, uh, several uh, protocols that can be used as from the hospital to hospital. is different according to your uh, training and what you are familiar with. Um, uh, you could use RISE, DHAB, whatever you use, the uh, uh, r response rate is in the range of 50%. 50 to 60 percent in some uh, papers, uh, 40 percent. The uh, patients who will, you will able to and uh, succeed to uh, uh, transplant is in the range of 50 percent. The three years progression fee survival is in the range of uh, 30 percent. In Hodgkin lymphoma, uh, situation is a little bit uh, better. Uh, the uh, regimen what I listed here are not including any of the novel agents because we are here uh, looking to chemotherapy in our outpatient fractionated eyes regimen. Um, and I listed only chemotherapy regimen. I didn't list the brentuximab and nivolumab and, and, and bimbrolizumab uh, data. Uh, the uh, regimen listed here in general overall response rate we could see in the range of 60%. Uh, uh, the complete remission rate is in the range of 30%. So, and uh, the uh, very important question is uh, what about uh, the status 
pre-transplant? Is it important in, uh, in diffuse large vessel lymphoma? Because this is our, for our data also important. Um, a complete remission rate, according to this study, might be not necessary, and there is uh, any uh, partial remission patient can go also for transplant in diffuse large vessel lymphoma. But we have, mm, yani there are different degrees of, of partial remission. I think every experienced physician will, will, will know this very well. Um, there is obviously, according to this trial, uh, retrospective trial, there is no difference between uh, the outcome between uh, patients who went in complete remission uh, to uh, autologous stem cell transplantation or in partial remission. Uh, in Hodgkin lymphoma, again, here the situation is different. Uh, patients um, who have a complete remission uh, prior uh, the autologous stem cell transplantation have a better outcome than those uh, who has partial remission according to the data. And now we are coming to our uh, protocol, outpatient fractionated eyes. And this is, again, he is not dealing with a sp specific subtype of lymphoma. It's dealing with all lymphomas who are going for transplant are some of our patients who include in the study who are not eligible for transplant, uh, um, as a Hodgkin lymphoma and non-Hodgkin lymphoma. Uh, what's the rationale for our, uh, for our data? Uh, the outpatient fractionated eyes is not a new invention for, from us. It's, uh, uh, we modified a little bit on that. Um, it has been reported earlier. Um, we implemented this uh, since maybe seven, eight years. Uh, we are uh, um, uh, treating our patient with outpatient fractionated eyes because, um, as I listed here, the quality of life of the patients, uh, especially Hodgkin lymphoma patients, they are young and they don't want to be admitted in the hospital. Um, and, you know, a phosphamide is going over 24 hours and in, 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 in many hospitals, uh, the patient has to be admitted for the classic uh, eyes regimen. Um, and, and one of the strongest uh, uh, um, reason why we um, try to implement this protocol is the increased bits, uh, the entry increased amounts on bits. We have, uh, the medical oncology has 15 bits and we, ha we are treating uh, uh, more than 1,000 patients per year, and um, there is really, really a huge pressure on, uh, on the beds. That's why, why uh, that was one of the main drivers why, uh, why uh, we uh, uh, looked uh, at these uh, protocols. Um, so the one above, um, uh, up is uh, the classic, the conventional uh, eyes uh, from uh, GCO, Moskowitz which is um, including uh, a phosphamide, uh, five gram per uh, meter square, giving over 24 hours together with uh, mesna and uh, carboplatin, five uh, EUC, uh, and etobuzide, 100 milligram per square meter. So if you look to the regimen below, this is our uh, regimen, so carboplatin and etobuzide we didn't touch on. The ephosphamide, we split the dose. Instead of giving five gram uh, per meter squared uh, over 24 hours, one shot, we split the dose to 1,500 milligram per square meter uh, to be given in D1, D2, and D3, each over two hours. So these are the patient characteristics. The median age of the patient is uh, 30. Uh, majority of the patients, they had Hodgkin lymphoma, maybe because Hodgkin lymphoma in Saudi Arabia is more than other uh, lymphoma subtypes. Um, around maybe 60%, I would say, they were Hodgkin lymphoma. Many of the patients, they were in advanced stages. Um, and time from end of initial therapy to relapse was just four months, which means we are dealing here with a population of patients who, who are not easy to treat. Again here, um, the uh, distribution of primary refractory, non-primary refractory, vast majority of patients, they had a bi uh, primary refractory disease, 64%, uh, 63% had primary refractory disease, 
for, uh, around 40% had extra noodal disease, and the stage at relapse, uh, so, uh, when the patient relapse, um, the vast majority of the patient they had uh, high risk uh, and having advanced stage, stage three and four patients, uh, percentage was uh, 87, 88%. So before we go to the results, um, the factors which, uh, as, as, as you could see, which might affect the results is that uh, the sig significant number of patients included in, in, in this retrospective uh, data analysis, they had a primary refractory uh, disease as a 63%, they had advanced ages, 88%, uh, and uh, many of them, they had extra nodal disease. But despite that, um, the, uh, the results were not very bad. The overall response rate was 48% uh, among all patients, primary refractory and non-primary uh, non refractory, with um, complete remission rate in the total population of 21%, uh, looking to uh, uh, non-Hodgkin lymphoma, the uh, overall response rate was 47%, which is in the range w w w to what we have seen. And in Hodgkin lymphoma, uh, uh, 48, uh, 49%. 75% um, uh, of eligible patients uh, proceeded to autologous stem cell transplantation as among those who are eligible uh, to transplant. Um, looking to the patient who primary refractory and non-primary refractory, the situation here looks uh, really um, interesting, uh, how uh, outpatient fractionated eyes uh, is doing in non-primary refractory. This is a really good, good results. The overall response rate was 63% with interesting complete remission rate of 42%, complete remission with outpatient fractionated eyes. However, Primary refractory patients, they are not doing very well, but uh, I mean, somebody can tell me which protocol, which chemo protocol uh, is, is, is highly effective in primary refractory patient, which uh, is uh, known to be very difficult to treat. The overall response rate in that population was 36%, uh, but still we do uh, um, see some patient who uh, went in complete remission with 11%. The event-free survival rate was 14.5 months, and the overall survival uh, rate was uh, um, around 90 months. This is the uh, outcome, primary refractory versus uh, non-primary refractory in terms of overall survival. You can see that uh, complete remission and partial remission patients, they are doing uh, much better than those who reach stable disease. Included in here are also those patients who are uh, not eligible for transplant and didn't go for transplant. And again, non-primary uh, patients, non-primary refractory patients, they did uh, a little bit or uh, better in terms of long, 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 long follow-up, they are doing clearly better than primary refractory patients. With regard to the IAs, uh, three and more. Um, hematological toxicity were documented in uh, around 20% of the patients. Uh, neutropenia in 10% of the patient, thrombocytopenia 9% uh, of, uh, of the patient, febrile neutropenia 6%, this is all grade 3 and 4 uh, IAs. There is some limitation here in, in documentation of the IAs. This is a retrospective uh, data and uh, many of our patients who are not uh, located nearby the hospital, uh, it was very difficult to get uh, lab tests for them. Uh, therefore, I think the data uh, uh, of the safety uh, has to be taken in caution, good caution. So our, my conclusion, uh, our study included the largest number of patients treated with outpatient fractionated eyes in the literature. We had uh, 90 uh, patients included in, in this trial. Uh, outpatient fractionated eyes regimen has favorable safety profile. Uh, the outpatient fractionated eyes regimen is a reasonable replacement for classic eyes if you decide to give your chemo, uh, to, to, to give your patients chemotherapy rather than novel agents in, in, in Hodgkin lymphoma patients. However, uh, uh, patients with primary refractory lymphomas, they are not doing very well with uh, the outpatient fractionated eyes, which is reflecting the nature of the disease as well. 
With that, I would like to thank you and I would like to invite you uh, to our upcoming conference, uh, the seventh uh, best highlights of uh, the ash, which is going to take place in, in uh, January uh, in Jeddah. Thank you very much. I'm happy to take uh, questions.